It will be the biggest multi-sport event Scotland has ever seen. This summer, Glasgow will host the 20th Commonwealth Games and the city's preparing to welcome one and a half million visitors to 14 spectacular sporting venues. Happy Glasgow Day! Thank you for inviting me to your wonderful city. Sal, what are you going to show me? Well, not the cathedral this time, not even the BBC actually. This. The Clyde? No, home of the Commonwealth Games. Over a million tickets have been sold and more than a thousand medals will be awarded. And we're here to find the faith at the heart of the Games and help you get in the sporting mood. I've got some trainers for you. I'm a little bit worried. I hope you're not expecting me to uh, do a 100 metre sprint <laughs> just, in these. Just a clue to what you're doing next. And this is a clue to what you're doing ah, next. Intriguing. Wanted to get a hands on one of these. Well, your wish is my command. And you know what? The music this week is all about stirring patriotic hearts wherever you are in the UK. I'm going to start with a belter, so why not join in, get in the mood, with tell out my soul. See you later. See you later. When the Games open in just 10 days' time, it's going to be all hands to the pump. And the volunteers, dubbed Clydesiders for Glasgow 2014, are at the heart of the action. Sarah Creese is one of them, and she's beaten tens of thousands of others to the job. But she doesn't know exactly what she'll be doing or where she'll be working. So I've invited her to Glasgow to fill her in. Sarah, welcome. Hello. Hello. Now, you don't know yet, do you? What job you're going to be doing. No, I just know I'm based around here. I yeah, think. well you're based exactly here <laughs> okay. because this is called the last mile route yep. and this is the point where spectators are going to come pouring forward to get to these great venues behind us and you are going to be here to meet them and greet them and welcome them and point the way. Oh yeah, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> and a hat. You better put that on before you put the finger on. <laughs> oh yes. Very nice. Yes. Point the way. This way. Hey, great stuff. Let's go. So why did you want to be part of all this? 
I love meeting different people and I love watching sport. I want people to enjoy the games and I think that being a hospitable person definitely shows um, my love for God and I think if I can just make one person have a good day, um, then that's enough. It's volunteers like Sarah who make the games run like clockwork, but they all need somewhere to stay. And with hotel prices sky high during the games, Sarah needed a cheaper alternative. Searching online, she came across a scheme where hundreds of locals were offering a place to stay for free. It was a godsend. Oh, the homestay program is extremely important. Uh, without it, I wouldn't be able to afford to stay here. Um, so for someone to put me up then for free is such a blessing. How much do you know about where you're going? Not at all, anything. <laughs> well, you know nothing, but I know everything. Oh, that, that's good, thank you. <laughs> Just a short drive out of the city, we arrive at the home of the Begg family. <laughs> this is your... You home? Hello. Hello. Karen. I'm Sarah. Sarah. Hello. Richard. Hello. Hello. Yeah. So Hello, I hope well. you guys are going to like this better. <laughs> You're going to see a lot of people. I hope so. <laughs> With the kids keen to get to know their new guest and the tea to get ready, Karen and I roll up our sleeves. This is another whole side of the Commonwealth Games that never occurred to me, all these volunteers and what, and what happens to them. And it's lovely to think of them all living in places like this. Yeah. No. We're not really helping at the Commonwealth Games, but this is something that we can yeah. do to get involved in it. Okay. Does it not cost you, though, you know, extra amount to feed for um, however many weeks? It does, but it's part of what God's called me to do. I believe I have a gift of hospitality, and I enjoy it. Oh, no, it doesn't fit in that bit. I love seeing people's faces and hearing them laughing in our eyes. <laughs> it's the sort of husband, I suspect, who just arrives with people. I know he does. He, he very often will phone me on the way home from somewhere and say, do you have enough to feed another mouth? So I'm kind of used to that. And it's just part of who I am. Well, Sarah, look at this meal. I would say you've struck lucky. <laughs> I know. It sounds really good. <laughs> And it's a good job Sarah likes Karen's cooking because she's going to be staying with the family for two weeks. <laughs> well, that was a lovely meal. and um, They're a great family and I think Sarah, you know, she's going to be really well settled here. And I think she's going to do a great job at the Commonwealth Games.
The Cause, a Catholic family from Essex. Earlier this year, they responded to our appeal for a family to take part in some of our programmes over the summer. The idea is that we set them some challenges so that you find out how their Christian faith is woven into their lives. This week, we chose the Commonwealth game sport of swimming and threw Dad Martin in at the deep end. I think if there was one sport that would fill me with dread, um, it would be swimming. I'm Lisa, I'm one of the swimming teachers at Garrens Park and we're going to set you a challenge but it's not going to be all of you, it's going to be Martin, okay? What we're going to do is it's going to be 1500 metre swim, no that's chance. 60 lengths of this pool here, you can do it, it's the distance of a Commonwealth Games triathlon, okay? <laughs> Can I do it for him? Why not? Unfortunately, it is Martin's challenge. Right. <laughs> mm, I'm going to be alright. I thought for him it's going to be just too much. It was like a mountain that I just knew he couldn't climb. Blow bubbles, breathe. The coach knew Martin wasn't a confident swimmer, but in some pre-challenge training, it became clear he struggled to swim full stop. Pretend you're grabbing some sweets and putting them in your pocket. And with your legs, try and imagine you're kicking a football up with your heels to the sky. Swimming is something that I don't feel comfortable doing because I have a bit of a fear of drowning and also I don't like being out in my depth. How are you feeling doing it at the moment? <laughs> with the challenge about to start, Martin needed as much moral support as possible and so Martin's parish priest and some friends from church turned up to cheer him on. Oh, they're a bit worried, are you? Yeah, I'm hoping I'm not going to need the last right. <laughs> Very often I, I tell myself I can't do things, but then it's having faith in God that, with guidance, with help, that you'll get there. Find out how Martin gets on after our next hymn. A song synonymous with facing adversity as well as being a well-loved sporting anthem. Standing side by side, coming for to carry me home.